Hi, this is going to be the first of several demonstration videos that will explain how you can start to build a simple template-based site. Um, first thing we need to start with is the HTML structure, so we need to create the basic document outline in HTML with the markup. And this is a picture from the PDF that had accompanied this lecture. You're supposed to actually read through that or watch that slideshow. Before you started this, it explained how to get started with collecting of data and organizing your, your layout and stuff like this. And we kind of decided that for the demonstration's sake that this would be the basic outline of what we wanted to do. And then there was another um, slide that looked sort of like this where it kind of gave you an overview of you know how you might begin to mark that up. Now the, the navigation area isn't included. That was in a different slide, but we're going to actually walk through it together. So don't worry about this. This is just for sort of demonstration purposes. All right, so let's transition into um, actually doing the project. So you'll see here on my desktop, I've created a folder called Exercise 4. If I open that, you'll see the basic structure that we have so far. We have an uh, empty CSS folder. So you can see that I don't have anything in there yet, but I went ahead and I created it. And I created an images folder. Inside of that, I went ahead and I put some pictures from one of the previous demos. I showed you guys how to create an SVG file. So that's there. Additionally, from another of the previous videos, uh, I showed you how you could get some screen captures of your websites. So these are there as well. Um, now, there's some other ones that I'm going to show you in a little bit how to grab. Um, and these are just a couple of arrow pictures that I, that I ended up using. And you could, just for right now, if you wanted to grab an arrow picture off the web, you could. Um, I prefer that you make them yourself, but if you uh, find some good ones that are already prefabbed uh, and they look really good and there aren't any licensing issues with using them, go ahead and use them. That's fine. Okay, so um, the last thing you'll notice, well, aside from our Komodo edit project file, we also have our index file. So I went ahead and I got started on creating that index file. And I'll go ahead and uh, open that up for you. And you see here that it's just the basic file, and on my left in the panel, I have my project showing, so it's all those files that I just described to you that are on my desktop. So uh, I have a file that I saved as index.html, and it's just blank right now. And uh, before we actually start putting the markup in, I want to just show you really quickly what this thing is going to end up looking like. Um, now, we already made this uh, heading picture. It says everything relative, and I had already gone and grabbed a bunch of the screen grabs, and this is one of the example ones. These are the names of those websites. But basically what I've done is I've created a responsive uh, base template, um, and then we would have social media stuff here. And this is ultimately what it's going to do. So it's you notice that as I scale the screen, it's uh, also scaling the content. Um, or at least the, the layout, not necessarily the words, like the words aren't getting smaller. But I, I do want you to notice something that is really important is that um, once we hit a certain place, you see these start getting a lot closer together. And so that they don't get all messed up, I create what is referred to as a breakpoint. And it's a responsive design breakpoint. And also you notice that these things are not floating next to each other anymore. I'm going to show you how to do that. This is the way that you can make designs that look good on a mobile phone so that everything is really, you know, correctly sized and it's optimized for mobile experience so that that way uh, the user doesn't come into some weird tiny looking little uh, screen and then they end up, you know, having to pinch and zoom a lot. This way, uh, I'm going to show you, it'll allow them to pinch and zoom if they want to, but uh, they don't have to. Most people would be able to read this just fine. And so whenever you get this menu up here, it'll pop down and you'll be able to navigate that way. Okay, and that's using a little bit of JavaScript. So that's what we're ultimately going to be doing. And this, as you can see, looks pretty much identically like the design that we created, um, you know, with just the blocks of text and color and stuff like that, where we have our nav bar up here, we have our heading where it says everything relative, um, or, you know, for the header, and then we have uh, our screenshot floating on the left and the description floating on the right in an article, and then we have our footer down here with some paragraph on the left for copyright 
uh, text and then some paragraph text on the right for uh, some social media stuff if we wanted to put like Facebook or whatever other kinds of icons there we could do that. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to minimize that and let's get back here. So this can be a little bit daunting so I'm going to just open this really quickly. As a reminder, this was uh, slide 18 from our PDF. And if you look at this really quickly, you'll notice that you know we have this nav bar at the top. I find that it's really helpful to have something visual as a guideline as you're doing this typing, because this typing can be, as I said, it can be a little bit daunting at first. So anyway, we've got this basic layout, and I'm going to come here in the title, and let's just type the word template. Um, and actually, if I wanted to, I could put the real name of my uh, thing, So, but then I could put template after it. So I can say everything relative, because that's the name of my, my site. And then I could say template. And then that way, whenever I, I have it open in a browser, I know that it's the template and not some other page You know, later when we create other pages. OK, so, um, so there's my title. All right, the next thing that I want to do is look at this layout here, and I can go, all right, well, there's a nav section, and I can even look at some of the, the markup that I, I was thinking about earlier, and I'd say, all right, well, this is nav, and then the next slide would show, you know, oops, that's way too far. There we go. The next slide would show what's inside of that nav, um, but let's just jump back here, and let's just put the basic nav information in there. So right now we're just going to tab in. We're going to say nav and then I'm going to let it autocomplete and I'm not going to worry about what's in there right now okay and but I do want to go ahead and give that nav an ID right because we probably are going to need to target it at some point with an ID um, and also maybe there's going to be another navigation in there some sometime later I don't know yet so we'll give the main navigation uh, an ID and I'm just going to call it top okay because it's the one that's at the top all right and then the next thing that I would want to do is come in there and I would want to make uh, my header section. Okay, and then inside of the header section, it looks like over here, if you look onto the left, it looks like we have an H1 in there. And uh, it's going to be the site title. So for right now, I'll just type the word site title. Okay, or words, site title. Okay, and uh, then next after that, it looks like we have our section for the content, so I'm going to go ahead and type section. And inside of that section, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and give it an ID, and I'm going to call it content. And that way we can target this, and if we wanted to use anything else called section later, this one has an ID called content, and then we know that we can specify specific rules just for this section or whatever, okay? So, or its descendants. Um, and so inside of that section, you'll notice here, let's click on this, we have the screenshot on the left and on the right we have the description. And the way that I've chosen to delineate the data that goes in these things is that <clears throat> I know that my image is going to be clickable, so it has to be wrapped in an A tag. You'll see right here that that's wrapped in an A tag. I guess you should do that. And it's going to be a picture. And the reason that it's a, a link is because you're going to be able to click on that screenshot, and it'll take you to the external site. Um, and then the other thing, too, is that because I might want to be able to do some things that are specific to styling where I, I don't want it just to be on an anchor link, I'm going to go ahead and put it inside of a div. Now you might ask, why a div? You know, we've talked about semantic markup and stuff. Well, you know, what's really not important is why we're wrapping this. The only reason that we would want to wrap this at this point is so that we can style it visually. And because it's just visual styling, it doesn't have any semantic meaning. I don't actually want to use something semantic because I don't want to give it meaning that it doesn't need. What's really important is that it's going to be wrapped around something that's an anchor link that is an image inside of that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we'll create a div here. And like I said, we'll give it a class. And this could be an ID, um, but I just, I'm choosing to use class just in case. Maybe I would want to have later, you know, extend this and I might want to have more screenshot um, classes on this page. So. I'm just foreseeing that as a future ex possible expansion. So, and inside of that div, again, we said that we're going to have an A, href, okay. 
And because I don't know <clears throat> yet what's going to be inside of it, I'm just going to go ahead and put a pound symbol. But what it's going to be is an external link at some point. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I could put a title in here too. So after the pound symbol um, I, and after the quotation mark, I put title equals. And then whenever you hover over it, it'll tell you uh, that it's going to open uh, a new window or something like that. So let's say go to the external site in a new window. Okay, or something like that. And then that means that if we're going to tell it to go into a new window, then we need to give it a target. And the reason that I would want to do this is because I don't want it to open the new window in the same excuse me, I don't want it to open the new website in the same window. I don't want to take someone away from my website. So I'm going to tell them, warn someone before they click on it that it's going to open a new window, and that's good for screen readers. It might not be such a big deal whenever uh, you can see, but whenever you're blind, uh, it's very confusing whenever new windows start uh, propagating. So we're going to say target is underscore blank, and that'll take us to a new um, a new web page or a new in a new window and then inside of that uh, anchor tag is where we're going to put our the content or the thing that's going to be clickable on the screen we'll be able to see this part on the screen and it's the clickable part so this is where our image goes so we'll say img src for source equals and this is where you know I could put uh, I could go ahead and put one of my pictures if I wanted to and if you look over here to the left um, Let's just go ahead and use one of them as the example. I'll go ahead and use uh, site01.jpg. Well, you can see here that it's in the images folder. So like I'm currently working on this file right now. That means because it's in the same directory, the exercise4 directory, that means all I have to do is call out the word images, forward slash, and then site01. So I could go here and I'll type images, forward slash, site01. 01.jpg. Okay, and then I need to give it some alt text, and the alt text needs to describe the picture. So, um, actually, let's go ahead and see what that is. So, I opened up a finder window, and this is my site 01 picture. And if I look at it, ah, it's the one that says Craig Morrison. So, now I know what to put in there, and I can say alt equals uh, Craig. Morrison's website, something like that. Okay, so that's my alt text. Okay, so now we're done with uh, that div. You can see that we're done here. And if you look off to the right, let's just scoot this over so we can see it while we're in here. This is the next thing that we would need to do. And instead of making you watch me type, I am going to uh, just simply paste some text and I'm going to explain it to you. Okay, so let me move this over a little bit. Uh, so what we have here is we have an article and this is going to be the site information. Okay, so here it says site info. We don't have to have an ID here, but I'm going to go ahead and just be safe and put it there because I might need it later. Um, and inside of the article, you typically are always going to want to have to have a header. It used to be an H group, and now it's a header. Uh, they're starting to look at deprecating. Actually, they did deprecate recently, very recently, the H group. So if you previously saw a demo that used H groups, it's not that big of a deal. But you can just substitute header now for H group. Um, but basically, we have this header inside of an article. And then we can put our heading levels in there. And then right outside of that header is the content of the article. And it would be our paragraph text. And for some reason, my paragraph tag was bumped in. If that ever happens and you need to untab something, you can put your cursor there and do shift tab. And it will uh, do that for you. Anyway, um, and then the next thing is, the, or the last thing I should say before we move on, is that we also need the footer section. And you look here and we have our footer. We have some paragraph stuff in there with some IDs on there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to paste it again. And then you can uh, sort of analyze it. And there we go. So it's pasted in there. We have our footer. And inside of that footer, we have a paragraph. It's got copyright, and I put an ID on it called copyright, and we have a paragraph whose ID is social, and it's uh, got it's going to have social media stuff. Okay, so that's the very basics, and then in the next demo, we're going to talk about how to get this nav set up, okay?